Tonight, iPhones outsell everything. The government wants to protect us from the Internet of Things. And YouTube gives up on Flash. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 262 for January 27th, 2015. This episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Squarespace. Creating and editing your website is easier than ever using their redesigned interface, Squarespace 7. With integrations from Getty Images, Google Apps, new templates, and more. Try the new Squarespace at squarespace.com and enter offer code TECHNIGHT at checkout to get 10% off. I'm Megan Maroney. Let's get right to the tech feed. Apple released earnings this afternoon, and by all accounts, they are crushing it. On his earnings call today, CEO Tim Cook said that Apple sold around 34,000 iPhones every hour, 24 hours a day for the entire quarter. That's 74.5 million iPhones in the last three months of 2014. Their first quarter earnings were $74.6 billion in revenue and a net profit of $18 billion. That's not only their largest corporate cor quarterly earnings, but the largest corporate quarterly earnings of all time. And yesterday we told you that Apple sold more iPhones in China than they did in the U.S. And today's earnings announcement confirms that the company's success in China helped boost Apple's overall profits. Other notable announcements that came as part of today's earnings call included Tim Cook's assertion that 2015 will be the year of Apple Pay, with 200,000 more vendors accepting Apple Pay, including vending machines, kiosks, laundry machines, parking pay stations, and other self-serve appliances. And finally, Cook dispelled all rumors that we'd see the release of the Apple Watch in March. He said he can't live without his, but the rest of us will have to wait until it ships in April. Roberto Baldwin, reporter at The Next Web, was listening in on Apple's earnings call today and live tweeted it. Are you there, Roberto? I am here. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. So what are your initial thoughts on the announcements? Oh, they're doomed. That company is out of... <laughs> I don't know what they're going to do next. I mean, if you just keep selling iPhones like this, they need to innovate something. That is the big uh, question. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, I mean, they're going to keep making iPhones and people are going to keep buying them. Uh, you know, it's one company making, you know, the one device that's on a platform. Uh, they don't have the, you know, the problem that Samsung and HTC have where you have a bunch of companies, uh, you know, making phones on, on one platform. And, you know, it's, it's the, the Apple versus Android. It's not, you know, I guess it was Apple versus Samsung, but it's really Apple versus Android, and that's hurting everybody on that Android end. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, what are behind the profits? I mean, is it just that everyone was waiting for these bigger screens and that's why everyone decided to go out and buy a billion of them? You know, I think Apple, you know, they saw that, you know, the larger screens are actually doing really well. Yeah, the, you know, the Samsung came out with a Note uh, line. And... They just, you know, and, and in a lot of markets and in China, especially, you know, people are buying bigger phones. And especially, you know, even in the United States, I'm seeing more and more people buying larger phones because it kind of fills that gap uh, between the phone and a tablet. And, you know, if you look at the tablet sales, you know, the iPad sales, I mean, you can kind of see where, you know, the iPhone 6 Plus or and even the iPhone 6 is probably cannibalizing it. And, you know, Tim Cook talked about that, how, you know, that spot in between the iPhone and the Mac is, you know, is, is being cannibalized. That's true. I mean, I, you know, I actually just got an iPhone 6 and I thought, well, I don't want to get a 6 Plus because I already have my iPad and I love it. So, you know, why do I need a bigger screen? And now it still fits in my pocket. But I think a lot of people are just being convinced of getting those bigger screens. Yeah. In some countries, you know, your, your smartphone is your main computer. And for a lot of people, actually, a smartphone is your main computer. It's not even, you know, emerging com uh, countries anymore. I mean, I have, I have family members. That, that is their computer. It's their smartphone. And if you have a larger screen, you still shove it in your pocket. And if it's comfortable for you, I mean, that's, that's, that's the way to go. And if I, I know how, how much larger we're going to get, uh, you know, our phones are going to be eventually. We'll need like a satchel or some sort of uh, special European carry-all to, 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 to lug them around town. But... Well, wasn't that one of the statistics that said that the iPhone sales out they outsold PCs? Wasn't that something that he said today? Or uh, yeah, I mean it's it's seventy four point four million. I one device. Well, I mean two two SKUs of one device. Seventy four point four million. That's insane. 
right. of anything. Yeah. Of anything. Just think about 74.4 million of anything being sold. And, you, you know, you're, you're, it sort of boggles the mind that they're just, we're just making iPhones and people just keep buying them. And uh, it, I don't see any sign. I mean, will it plateau at some point? And every, you know, every year, uh, you know, well, maybe this will be the year that, you know, iPhone sales plateau. But, you know, the world's a big place and people are, you know, more and more countries are kind of like hopping on the Apple bandwagon, and it's. Uh, I, I don't know what they're going to do next year. I don't know if they'll make a bigger phone or keep them at this size, but they'll probably sell, you know, 80, 90 million next year. All right. Well, let's talk about Apple Pay. Uh, Tim Cook said this was going to be the year of Apple Pay. What are the obstacles that Apple faces? I mean, the obstacles they have is, you know, some. There's the the the, the, the QR code uh, consortium. I forget their name, but you know they you have these 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 companies that are they have QR codes and they've made uh, partnerships with retailers who are also who are part of these you know sort of consortiums. So that's kind of the big uh, block for for some retailers. But as more and more banks sign on, as more and more retailers, and then you have vending machines, and as more and more you know places where you pay sign on the Apple Pay. These retailers aren't going to want to be stuck with, you know, this QR code. That you know, we should stop trying to make QR codes a thing. Mm -hmm. They're they're great at the airport for checking in, but let's it, it, stop. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, uh, the internet was sounding the death knell for the iPad all morning, um, and I don't think that. And then he didn't really. It, sales were down. I mean, what do you think? Do you think that? Um, what do you think is going to happen to the iPad? Oh, you know, I, I don't think, I, you know, he was talking about how in, in China, you know, I, I think it was 70, you know, there's 60 or 70 percent of people who are buying iPad. It's their first iPad. And, you know, the, the refresh rate on iPads is a lot slower than, you know, an iPhone, a phone you have for two years, an iPad you can have for five or six, really. I mean, they just, they just keep going. And so that's, you know, that's going to hurt them in, in the short term. But then, you know, in the long run, if people continue to buy tablets, I mean, the iPad is still, you know, if, if you're part of that platform, that's the tablet you're going to get. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you want to, you know, I want my apps that I bought for my phone to work on my tablet, you know. And, and when you have these sort of cross-platform houses, you know, you have to buy an app twice if you have, a, you know, an Android tablet and, a, and an iPhone. Um, but you know, the, the tablet market is, I, I think it's, it's still probably going to shrink a little bit more. I don't think people are, you know, with the larger phones, I think, you know, phones are going to take over the tablet market. And even if it does go down, I mean, Apple had a pretty good, you know, they had a, a few good years in that, you know, running that market. And it's not like they're, you know, losing money to someone else. They're losing money to themselves. Mm -hmm. So either way, there's big piles of cash being backed up to their door. <laughs> right. We don't have to start feeling sorry for them because the Yeah, iPad no one should feel... <laughs> if the iPad just fails miserably because the iPhone, like, overtakes it, no one should feel bad for Apple. <laughs> no. At all. No. So uh, Microsoft had some big announcements last week, and they were stealing all, you know, the thunder. But, you know, how do you think they're feeling now with the, in light of all of these earnings compared to their earnings, which were not so great? Uh, you know, Microsoft's been in a transition for a few years trying to, to you know, uh, they, they kept talking about love. They want people to love Microsoft. <laughs> the, and there's a very, you know, people love Apple which as much as you could love a corporation, which is awkward. <laughs> um, you know, people, people love Apple. I mean, it start, you know, for, for a long time, it was just graphic designers and artists who were using Apple products. And then, you know, it... it sort of grew once again with the, you know, Steve Jobs took over again and, you know, iPad and iMac and we all know that story. Um, and so, you know, Microsoft's tr kind of hoping to sort of get in on that bag wagon where they're like, you know, we're, we're a new company. We're very open. You know, we're doing these new things. We got HoloLens. We got, you know, this, this new developer program where you can have one code to work on all your, you know, Windows devices. And, you know, they're, they're, they're looking for love. And I think, you know, they're, their quarterly is, is expected, but I think they're looking at the long game right now. And, you know, it's, they would love to be an Apple spot. Right. They would, but, you know, they really drug their feet when it came to mobile. I mean, Google had something out, like, really quickly after the iPhone. Uh, you know, Android was there. Um, even Palm had something out before Windows, you know, before uh, Microsoft had. So they really drug their feet. So it, it's been a really tough battle for them to, to sort of get into that mobile market. And so many, like I said, so many people, mobile is their computer. It's, you know, 
Right. Well, thank you so much, Roberto. Uh, thank that you. Is, was Roberto Baldwin, the reporter at The Next Web, and you can keep up with him at Twitter at, at Strange Ways, but no vowels. Right? No vowels. <laughs> I, was, I was no vowels before Twitter was even thought of. <laughs> awesome. I don't know. <laughs> well, thanks, Roberto. We hope to talk to you soon. All right. Thanks a lot. Coming up, will the government ever be as cool as Google? And what can you do with 20 iPhones and a roll of duct tape? But first... This episode is brought to you by Squarespace.com. Squarespace recently launched the completely redesigned interface Squarespace 7. Now it's even easier to create your own professional website or online portfolio. Here's why you'll love Squarespace. Live editing on one screen, making changes is easier with no more toggling to the preview mode. Squarespace has 14 new designs, giving you over 30 to choose from. So go ahead, browse through the templates to find one that fits your personal style and whatever kind of website you're trying to build, whether you're a musician, an artist, an architect, if you want a site for your restaurant, or your wedding, or really any kind of e-commerce site. Cover Pages is also new with Squarespace 7. Choose from 10 new templates, perfect for creating quick landing pages for your brand or your personal identity. Squarespace 7 also includes Getty Images. For just $10 each, you can pick from thousands of professional Getty Images and use them on your site. Social media is built in, linked to your site to Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Google, Google+, Tumblr, YouTube, Pinterest, and more. And don't forget to use their mobile apps with a portfolio, note, metric, and blog mobile apps. You can make changes from anywhere. It's incredibly easy to use, and if you want some help, Squarespace has live chat and email support 24-7. It's also inexpensive. It starts at just $8 a month, and Squarespace takes care of hosting so you don't have to. Plus, you get a free domain name if you sign up for a year. Start a free two-week trial with no credit card required and start building your website today. When you sign up for Squarespace, make sure to use offer code TECHNIGHT to get 10% off. We thank Squarespace for their support of Tech News Tonight. Squarespace, start here, go anywhere. And now on to a few more stories we're following today. As hard as it may be to believe, other tech news happened today that wasn't announced by Apple. At the annual State of the Net conference in D.C. this morning, White House Chief Technology Officer Megan Smith promoted the government's use of open source development and said that despite naysayers, technological innovation in Washington could happen, provided the government finds a way to attract enough techies to jobs there. According to Jeff John Roberts, writing on GigaOM, Smith also talked about the lack of gender diversity in tech. Other notable moments from today's conference included a keynote by Federal Trade Commission Chairperson Edith Ramirez outlining the FTC's plan to keep tabs on privacy violations as the Internet of Things becomes more of a reality in our lives. Ramirez made similar statements at CES a few weeks ago, but today's announcement included a 71-page report outlining just how the FTC plans to keep your Internet-connected toaster from reading your email. Twitter today started rolling out private group messaging and also a video recording feature. The group messaging service enables Twitter users to create groups of up to 20 people for private conversations. The new video feature enables a camera icon in the Twitter app, which initiates the shooting, combining, editing, and tweeting of video clips of up to 30 seconds in length. The video feature doesn't replace Twitter's own Vine service, which is limited to six-second videos. The feature will gradually roll out to all users over the next few days. YouTube's today stopped using Flash by default, favoring its own HTML5 video player for Google's Chrome, Microsoft's Internet Explorer 11, Apple's Safari 8, and in beta versions of Mozilla's Firefox. The move is part of a five-year process that began when Google announced a test version of its HTML5 video player in January 2010. Now, if you recall, that was the same year the late Apple founder and CEO Steve Jobs wrote his famous Thoughts on Flash open letter, where he talked about Flash as a dying standard and about HTML5 as an emerging one. And finally, today we've been talking all about the rise of iPhones in China, but there's also a thriving black market for iPhones in China. According to Business Insiders, smugglers can get $820, that's U.S. dollars, for an iPhone in Hong Kong versus the 1,000 U.S. dollars people will pay for them on China's mainland. And for this, one brave woman taped 20 iPhones to her waist and abdomen, abdomen in an attempt to get them to southern China. Now, I don't know if you've ever tried to walk with 20 iPhones in your pants, but you look pretty suspicious, and as expected, the woman was caught you might remember that we reported a similar story a few weeks ago when a man had duct taped 94 iPhones to his body, but also didn't make it through security. 
Maybe we'll hear more about that in Tim Cook's next quarterly earnings report. And that's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. Subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. Write to us at TN2 at twit.tv and watch live every weekday at 4 p.m. Pacific. And don't miss our morning news program, Tech News Today, every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Megan Maroney. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Cashfly.com.